下来呢，我们欢迎啊、呃、，Sister s a t i s h a Yeah. Thanks. You really work for women. You know me very well. You got me. Ah, ah, ah. He, we, 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 Actually, at first, when Sister Therese asked me to decide is there anybody from Thailand that will come to present and to build up this network, helping uh, the victim, violence victims. So I said, okay, Sister, I'll find somebody. Because I, I was not so sure if the person who is working for justice and peace in Thailand will be available. So, but anyway, let me check. And then she came back to me again, Sutisa, why don't you come by yourself, she said. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, I have to thank Sister Therese again to make me come here, really. So, so as a uh, uh, sister, I, I, I don't think I need to repeat about this. And uh, right now I'm uh, representing Asia Pacific, so as an NGO representative. So. In Asia Pacific, like in our congregation, we have 72, 72 countries, and only in Asia Pacific we are in 70, um, in 20 countries. So, this is the web how we grow as the congregation. So, as the an NGO, we have the special consultative status with the uh, ECOSOC United Nations. So, we use our uh, this network as our strength to really support one another in building up, uh, helping women and children. So this is just some something that's uh, within the organization. So I think you have the copies of the of the palm point already. So uh, the issues that we are working with. So our friends has mentioned already. So it's about structural injustice. That's why violation happened to our women and children, women and girls, human trafficking, migration, and economic justice of poverty. So we did mention, actually, the root cause of all violation to our women and children are poverty, is poverty. It is the root cause. So here we are. You see the many red dots here, many stars all over. That means good shepherd presence in, in that place, in that country. So just come back to Thailand a little bit. I, I did not talk much about Thailand. As today, I, I have some experience with Indonesia, so I will also share with you about uh, violation in, in Indonesia. So in Thailand, First, we came to Thailand because we were asked by Bishop Conference of Thailand that the Good Shepherd should come to work in Bangkok because so many internal migration migrate from different corners of Thailand to Bangkok and to work. And it's not only come to work, but after that, they're being lured into traffic to work and to be exploited and no one take care of them, and they just go wandering. So, this form, and then they asked us since the year 19, uh, 1960, but we were not able to be there. So finally, by the year 1965, we were able to come, and we have our first house in Bangkok. <laughs> Sorry. So, in Bangkok, in Bangkok. <coughs> So in the year, uh, in Bangkok, first we respond to the unplanned pregnancy. So the mother who, who pregnant and look for a place to go for abortion. But in our culture, it's really very strongly not accepted. So anyway, Good Shepherd have the first home for mother and baby. And after that, we also have a home for a girl. But a girl that we mentioned is from 13 years old after primary school until 20 years old. In those days, but lately, about five years back, the girls in the residence, we find the age is even younger. 
because in society are so broken and so many problems. So these young girls from seven years old left at home alone. No one take care and just locked up inside the room. And just another two days, people will come. Sister, we hear the girls cry. Somebody cry inside the room. Please come and see. So the good shepherd will go and see. Actually, the national law also not really, uh, how to say, not support for uh, helping uh, for those who are young, younger than uh, 18. So you need somebody to really say, okay, you, you can take care of my daughters or my children. But for good shepherd, we get special credit in Thailand. So no matter the girl, how young are they, so the government will not look at that. But they look at the sister of the Good Shepherd is really helping people. So they just entrust everything to the Good Shepherds. So that's in, in, in Bangkok. In Bangkok. So we have some other projects for women who stay around the slum. And every day, they're just being beaten by their husband. The husband will come and get their money and go out and drink. And then get drunk come back again and beat again. It happened like that. So the sister also go out and see where are these women and how to really get them out from that situation by bringing them in, in, in our center and then give them, provide them job and trainings. So we have vocational training center, so we send them for different trainings. So we have hairdressing, dressmaking, foot massage, cooking, English class, and also computer. So that so it depends on them who are interested in what uh, yes. yes activity. <laughs> and then so after that they just find them their own place. That okay, I'm I'm good in this and my husband no longer beaten me because I'm able, I'm capable, I'm no longer staying at home and being under him. So most of the women in our center, like now, we have 120 of them doing uh, sewing and all these products have been exported into Australia, into Europe and also to uh, America. So we exported into different areas. And the money that we get from this uh, ex export, so we give them, we give them. So this helps them. And uh, also in the same time, the girls in the residence, who come to us, so I speak already, <laughs> so this is the beautiful face of the sisters, no? <laughs> you will see somebody beautiful there. Ah, look at her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Ah, beautiful face, huh? Okay, we enjoy later. And, and this is some of the photos, some of the work that we provide. I think these are the women that I told you about 120 of them, that they are they, they have been their sewing machine in, in the center. So they have different sections. We start from raw material until finished product. So, so they're all doing like business, like a company, but we're not company anyway. Mm -hmm. See, handwork. This is our first missionary. Sister Louise Hogan, so yes, helping these women. So in time that every day that these women will gather together, it's not only come to work, but come to share. In the morning before they go to work, they will sit together and if there is anything occur in the, in the family, any violence happen in the family, they will just freely speak out, no shame. They will speak out, and after that, they'll pray for one another. This is about community support. We visit in the community. And this is how they be together. So this is some, some of the very naughty, huh? Uh, see, I pressed many times. And it's still there. Okay, anyway, <laughs> technical problems. <laughs> and this is the girls' center. The girls' center, this is uh, where they stay. So most 
of the girls we provide education. So many young girls from seven years old, so means that they still need for formal education. So we send them out to government school. And then we network with the government and ask for support from the government. Actually, in Thailand, if you come from this province and when you migrate into Bangkok, it's very hard for you to really continue in Bangkok. But for us, we get our government to keep an eye, this is Good Shepherd, and we are doing for the value and dignity of the human person that they will be able to help themselves. So the government said, okay, okay, in the future we will not have problem. So finally, support and give a space in the government school for the girls, yes, yes. So our girls being sent to government school, but for those who are over the age, but they have not yet studied, we provide non-formal education for them. So these are, and uh, so they have also, before they go to sleep, they do their practice and religion practice. So Buddhist. And in here, you will see that uh, it's not really clear but they are some of them wearing white, and they are Buddhist nun, Buddhist nun. So most of the Buddhist nun who go to to their how to say doing their practice, and uh, they have not yet have education, so they come to continue with us. So we work together with Muslim, with uh, Buddhist, and with many other religion, and we have very good Hinduist friends who keep on coming to our center twice a year. That big group will come to our center to support. So this is how they live together. And we also have activity for them. So these girls, uh, we keep these girls until they are 18 in, in, in our center, until they are 18. And in the same time, not only 18, but we also observe if this girl, while she came here and she stayed with us, will she be able to continue her life? <coughs> and if somebody has really worked hard and we feel that, okay, she's something, she can move on, she can do something. So after she finished her, uh, her primary, we sent her until her high school. And when she finished her high school, we sent her out from our center to our another halfway home. So she will try to live on herself. So in the same time, during the day, she will come to work with the women that I, I showed you, 120 women. They will come and work with those women. And in the evening, they will go to the college to continue their education. So it will go on like this for about four years after their education, uh, their university. So after the university, these girls will make the decision whether they would like to continue to work with the Good Shepherd or they will say, okay, sister, I find I am now graduate already and I would like to have another experience in working some, in some other place. So we also give them freedom. So this is how it run. So the house that I mentioned, I see, see, in time of sickness means that this boy uh, this uh, young uh, monk uh, with the granny because the parents died of HIV. So HIV. And this group of people down here, they are uh, the person who, who are very sick with HIV also. But you will see they jumped. How can the HIV people jump like that? So first they came to us hopeless. Look only for the coffin and to go for the funeral. But when they come with the support of the group and the sisters and the activity that we provide for them, where do they jump here? Behind them are the field, rice field. So during the rice field farming, we have the land. For those who are still strong, still able to do, they do little by little. And when the harvest come, they get plenty of rice and they share. And even the good shepherd also get part to, to get the share with them. So we are lucky to have them. So, 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 so. That is about Thailand. And uh, we move also in Thailand, not only in Bangkok, but we move to the north, Chiang Rai, Nong Khai, 
Phuket in the south and also in Pattaya. We work directly with the women in prostitution. So we have the center in Pattaya for two centers and we serve 300 women a day, a day. 300 women who work in prostitution in Pattaya, the tourist city. So if you have a chance, come to visit us. So that's all in Thailand. I just really... Who's in the motorbike? <laughs> so curious to know who's that. <laughs> okay, I tell you who she is. This is in Indonesia. This is in Indonesia. <laughs> it's not a talk show, huh? <laughs> so, so now in Indonesia, uh, I will share with you about one month experience, but in one voice that I would like to share with you. I was with our sister. You see this big and fast. How about Taiwan? Taiwan is about this big, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Taiwan is about this big. But the whole this, you see, vast. And Timor is stay somewhere here. Yeah? Oh, anyway, oh, anyway, I, I don't know. Somewhere here. <laughs> OK. Uh, See, in Indonesia, it's very big, and there are 17,508 Iceland. And about population, don't ask me now. I'm not Indonesian. <laughs> okay, when I was with them, when I was with them, when I was with them, they here, our sister in Jakarta. So, I show only these two. Huh? Uh, Sumatra. Anyway, I, I show, show some, somewhere here in Jakarta. Uh, Sumatra? Uh, okay, anyway, okay. Oh, means that you, you don't sleep at all. Okay, okay, okay. Now I can move on. I can move on now. Anyway, somewhere around here, you know. I went to visit our sister in 10 communities. So Miss from Malaysia laughed like anything and the bell rang already. Okay, I go fast. Uh, from, from uh, I, I, what, uh, the two places that touched me most was uh, here, Kalimantan. Yeah, Flores. No, no, in some place, I'm, uh, no. Kalimantan. And, and so somewhere is rooting. Uh, uh, that, that below, okay. Down in the island, okay. Anyway, I was uh, not afraid, okay. Very good, very good. See, yes, big support, I get big support. Anyway, I, I was in in, uh, in Kalimantan, uh, and I went to Kalimantan, and you see, this is the road, the communication that I went from Jakarta. I have to take about three days to reach to Kalimantan. I would like to tell you just how difficult that the sister will be able to reach out to people. First hand, I would like to get information. I send them email today, and the next two or three days, why no reply? Why no reply? I ask. But when I experience being with them, I said, aha, uh -huh. okay, I need to send them email about at least three weeks ahead of time. Because they might caught on the way. Because the, the Communication is not really great. Electricity is not like here. It's nothing. You know, they get electricity from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. And sometimes if it's rain, it's gone. Nothing. And if you go to the village, my goodness, I have to land in Katapang and I have to take about three hours from Katapang to the river and cross the river with motorbike. And then, and then after cross the river, Yes, I have to take another another three hours or four hours from, from the river. And the road is just like this. The road is just like this. And it's not easy at all. And see how people, how people are living in such poverty and suffering. And imagine the young child have to walk to school. No motorbike, no car, no truck. Have to walk on foot like this. From the morning, they carry things and then go out to school. And on the way back, the girls, most of the girls, 
being kidnapped. Because on the way back, it's late and the parents are not there. Kidnapped. And most of the time, see, you do see this one. I took from upper and it took about 20, uh, 20 meters or uh, 20, no, no, 20 meters. But took two hours to get away from this mud. To get away from this mud. So, how difficult it is. And in this village, why we call widow and orphan village? Because all the men have been in Malaysia, in Sarawak, to work. For four years, five years, no information. And the child who's born already, growing with my father, 50 of them in that village. And our sister has to take four hours out and four hours in. And we have not that great vehicle to go. This one not belong to the Good Shepherd. We asked Father, I am from Thailand. I would like to visit my people. Please bring me the SVD. Okay, sister, I bring you. So the SVD father took us here and then we stuck here about two hours in the mud. And nobody will come to help us because it's very remote and far from one another. So I just share with you how things really very difficult in life where people really have to experience. I believe in many other places also the same. But this is some, this is some. So if you have more questions, ask me here and then I will answer. If not, outside. <laughs> if not, you see my name cards and then soon you get in touch with me through the website, to my email, or if you have enough money, take the phone. Hello, Sutiza. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. 